Welcome to Metalecto. Today we are going to discuss basic features of the viruses. So without wasting time, let's start. First of all, we will discuss the basic components of the viruses. There are two basic components, proteins and the nucleic acid. So if you see here that the first component is the protein and second component is the nucleic acid. So in the nucleic acid, you can either see DNA or RNA. So here if you see here DNA or RNA. But the important thing is that at one time you will see the one component. If DNA is present, then you will never see the presence of RNA. If RNA is present, then you will never see the presence of DNA. It's mean that the both DNA or RNA cannot exist together. So this point is very much important. Second, if we talk about the organelle, so there is no mitochondria, there is no ribosome, there is no enzyme, there is even no cytoplasm are actually present in the viruses. So you will see that no mitochondria, mitochondria, no ribosome, no enzyme, even there is no cytoplasm. So these are basically the important components that are required in the replication of viruses. But viruses do not contain these components. Then how can viruses can replicate? So actually viruses require the host for its replication. Host may be humans, animals and even different bacteria. So this point is very much important. Virus, so that's on the basis of this we called viruses obligate intracellular parasite. Obligate that is restricted to the specific environment. Intracellular and what type of environment? Intracellular inside of the cell. And parasite that live in the host and get nutrient and may cause harm to that host. So these are basically the parasite. That's why we call uh, viruses are basically the obligate intracellular parasites. Okay. If we see that how viruses replicate, so two basic process, lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle through which the virus replicate if I speak generally. So if you see that the lytic cycle, lytic and second one is the lysogenic cycle. So these are basically the two cycle, lytic and lysogenic. So if you see here that we discuss two component, protein and the nucleic acid. So if you see here, inside of the virus is the nucleic acid. Here is the nucleic acid. And if you see here that the outside you will see the protein core. And that protein core is called the capsid. So, if you see here that this code is actually called the capsid and capsid is actually made up of different components and that components are basically the capsum here. So, this point is very much important. Now, two component, protein and the nucleic acid. Second thing is that important thing, some viruses get enveloped from the host so if you see here, like if you see here, this is the virus and this virus having envelope around itself. So if you see here, like this one is the envelope, this is the envelope and that envelope is actually come from the host. So that's why we call it envelope viruses. But keep remember that the envelope is not present in all viruses. There are some viruses having envelope and there are some uh, viruses that are having no envelope. So this point is very much important. Next, if we see the size of the virus, so you will see the 20 to 300 nanometer in diameter. So smallest will be the 20 nanometer and largest will be the 300 nanometer in diameter. So if we talk about the shape, then we give different names to the viruses. So if you see here, like the sphere, bullet shape, rod shape, but these shapes are 
informal but we there are actually the specific geometry of the viruses that can be if we talk about generally two basic geometry exist in the viruses icosahedral and second one is the helical so we describe spherical bullet and rod shape these are basically informal but actually viruses having a specific geometry and that geometry two uh, geometry first one is the icosahedral and second one is the helical so if we talk about the nucleic acid so nucleic acid can exist in two forms first form is the linear linear and second form is the circular so there are basically the two forms of the nucleic acid so in the nucleic acid we categorize two things so first one is the rna and second one is the dna so if you see dna or rna can exist in the linear form or can exist in the circular form so if we see if we first of all talk about the rna so you see that the rna can exist as single stranded rna and double stranded rna so if you see here like this is the double stranded rna and here is the single stranded rna okay and if you see here uh, dna so here is the single stranded dna and here is the double stranded dna so this is the important thing second thing if you see that the rna can exist as a whole or can exist in fragmented form so two forms you will see that the rna can exist as a whole single form and can exist in the fragmented form but if we see the dna dna will only exist as a single one so this point is very much important this can exist as a whole there is no fragmented form of the dna if we talk about first of all single stranded rna then you will see before we discuss the rna you should know that the in the rna you will see the adenine will be opposite to the uracil and guanine will be opposite to the cytosine this is the case of rna in the dna you will see adenine will be opposite to the thymine and guanine will be opposite to the cytosine the basic difference between the dna and rna is the uracil and the thymine okay now if we see that the single stranded rna so if you see augc is the basic sequence that can convert into the or that can be translated into the protein this sequence if the virus contain this sequence then it can able to translate the protein so if i say that there is a virus and that virus contain this sequence augc here is the situation this case this case one case one virus having sequence augc and that sequence can be translated into the protein so if you see uh, that this rna will be translated by the different protein here is the basically the ribosome and if you see then the, this sequence will be translated and you will see the formations of the protein in it okay now second case if you see this is the second case in the second case if i say there is a virus and that virus contain sequence uagc now this sequence cannot be translated first of all this sequence will convert to the translated form if you see that the it will first transcribe it will first transcribe then it will translate so it will transcribe u will be opposite to the a u will be opposite to the a u will be opposite to a a will be opposite to the u they are both interconvertible 
C will be opposite to the G and G will be opposite to the C. Now, you see that the AUGC is similar to that. Now, this sequence can be translated. So, it will uh, go to the ribosome and translate over there and formations of the different protein. Now, you see the important thing. This case, one is actually called the positive positive polarity or positive sense RNA because that sequence can easily be translated into the protein. But in the case 2, this is actually called the negative polarity or negative sense RNA. Why? Because this sequence cannot be translated into the protein. It will first convert into the positive sense then it will be translated into the protein. So here is the basic difference between the positive sense RNA and the negative sense RNA. So this is actually the case about the single stranded RNA. If we see the double stranded RNA, then you will see that this is the double stranded RNA and AUGC and the opposite will be A opposite to U, U, A, G, C, C, G. Now, it will first transcribe into the RNA and that will be the messenger RNA. It will first transcribe. Okay. Now, U opposite A, A opposite U, C opposite G, G opposite C. Now, this mRNA, messenger RNA is similar to that, AUGC. And that sequence can be translated. So, it will go to the ribosome and here this sequence will be translated and formations of the protein over there. So, this is actually the case in the double-stranded RNA. If we see the DNA, then you will see that if we talk about, first of all, talk about the single-stranded DNA. So, you see that DNA TACG is the sequence of the DNA. Okay, now you will see this DNA will first transcribe, transcribe into the mRNA. So you see that the T will be opposite to the A. Okay, you see T will be opposite to the A. A and U. There is a difference. Now this is the case of DNA, DNA contain the A, but now it should be T, but it is actually the RNA, so that it is replaced by the T, so in that situation it is the U, and here is the C, C will be opposite to the G, and here is the G, G will be opposite to the C, now this is actually the messenger RNA, now this messenger RNA goes to the ribosome and you will see the formations of the protein over there. So this is the case of the single stranded DNA. Now you see the double stranded DNA. In this case you will see this is the double stranded. Now first one strand will first transcribe. So if you see this will transcribe and here you see that the a T will be opposite to the A. Okay. A in that situation A. A will be opposite to the U. This is actually the RNA. And in the RNA we cannot see any thiamine. So actually thiamine is replaced by the uracil. So this is the A will be opposite to the U. C will be opposite to the G and G will be opposite to the C. Now this messenger RNA goes to the ribosomes and over the ribosome you will see the formations of the protein by the translation process. So this is all about the single stranded, double stranded RNA and DNA, positive sense, negative sense RNA. So this is all about the basic features of the viruses. If you have any question then you may ask in the comment section. Thank you.